Hello, community! Today we have something brand new. We have a continuous sort machine. And you might ask, hey, what is it? It's easy. You forget about your CNN graph neural network for Transformer, T5, ChatGPT, Gemini. Forget about everything. We have some complete new system. And here we have it, May 12, 2025. This is for me today. A new publication by Sakani AI, Continuous Sword Machine. And this is really something special. This is absolutely different. You have never seen this before, but I want to show you this because it is different. It has some complete new ideas how to build AI. It's about 60 pages, really interesting. Here you have the complete uh, listing here, what they are talking about. And the main point is, we introduce here a decoupled internal dimension, a new mathematical space, a novel approach to modeling here, more the temporal evolution of our neural network activity. So they ought to tell us, hey, we view this new dimension as that over which a sort can unfold in an artificial neural network. So they think about here, similar to biological systems here, we need a new mathematical space, a new dimension where this thinking can happen and we have a temporal evolution. Interesting approach. Let's see what it leads us. So the inter this new internal dimension allows here this continuous thinking machine to build up complex time-dependent neural dynamics. Why? Is it really a dimension? No, it is just a mathematical construct. And we say, hey, yeah, we just add a dimension and in this dimension we can fill in a dynamic behavior. So orders tell us this directly addresses here the biological principles, beautiful, but we are interested here in the computational implementation. The Talus here, this is a kind of an abstraction for the human neurons that we have. And they call here neuron level models suddenly. So we have a neuron level model, beautiful, where each neuron has its own internal weights that process here a history of incoming signals, which they call the pre-activations, to calculate its next activation. And yes, we are in the activation space. Now we have here a model instead of a static ReLU function. Simple implementation, scales well, goes well with existing deep learning architecture. So an interesting idea. Let's have a look how well it performs. Now, if you say, hey, wait a minute, we are again here learning new waves and a self-learning machine. Yes, and we are again in the activation space. Yes. In the last two videos, we also have been in the activation space. And now two, and this is the third video where we look here at new activation, where we have new mathematical spaces that we build and we build new neural level models. What a coincidence. Three videos in a row. The others tell us we use neural synchronization directly as the representation that we want to achieve. So we have here new kind of representation with which this new model observes through the attention query and predicts via the projection to our logits. And you might ask, why? Why do we need this? Well, and the authors tell us here, yeah, the frontier of artificial intelligence faces here a critical juncture moving beyond simple input-output mapper to what a more genuine reasoning capability. So we want to improve the reasoning capabilities. And this research team says, hey, we found a new solution. Now, this new idea differs now from our existing approaches in three main ways. We have now suddenly an internal dimension that the authors call a sort dimension, but in fact, it's just a feature dimension. We don't even know if this is a pattern in the data. This enables here some sequential sort on any conceivable data modality. Then, second, we have some private neuron level models. And this enables here the consideration of precise neural timing. We just introduced the dimension. And then we have a synchronization used directly as the representation we are looking for solving tasks. And remember, we also had a look at different representation in my last two videos. So the authors tell us, hey, we introduce now a timing dimension over which something akin to a sort can, can now unfold in this new system. And they define now a synchronization matrix, a tensor structure. And I'll show you this, just to remember number six. And this is kind of an inner dot product between post-activation histories. Beautiful, great. 
Now this this new dimension, let's call it tick. So this produces now output at each internal tick t. What a coincidence like t for time. And the key question arises now, how do we optimize the model? You remember AI model optimization from 1 to 100 across here these internal new temporal dimensions. And they say, well, we go more or less with the same idea. No? Let this be a prediction vector probability of classes with an internal tick t. Maybe you could read an internal time t where c is the number of the classes. We have a ground roof target and we can compute now a loss at each internal tick using here a classical standard loss function, such as the cross entropy from our classical transform architecture. Now, what a coincidence that we can use here the same optimization ideas. We just have to take care about this new dimension that they interpret here as a dynamic temporal dimension. Yeah, let's look here at the models. The neuron models here that we have they have here, they can compute their own activation, activation function, using now some internal history. Yes, we have an additional time dimension. So each neuron has its own multilayer perceptron to process now a history of pre-activation up to a certain length, let's say 5, 10, 15, whatever. And this MLP produces now the post-activations at each tick t. But we also have here the the grander model, no? the overarching model, the synapse model that we need to connect our neurons. So the synapse model, those are the models interaction between the neurons across here our Latin space. We have a unit style MLP synapse model. This interconnects the neuron of a shared d-dimensional space and it computes now the pre-activation at its internal tick t, where d is simply the model width. So this uses now the historical pre-activation to update here the current state. So this is now an interesting combination here of, of the models. If you're not really familiar, never mind, I'll give you an example. But at first, just applying here now this new synapse model produces now pre-activation at an internal tick t. This is our artificial new dimension that we introduced. So we have a concatenation here of z with our cross attention here is our attention coming in and if we have here our uh, synapse model this is exactly what we can calculate pre-activations now if you're not familiar here with UNAT this is the video for you here to uh, explain to your latent diffusion models here LDM with uh, variational autoencoders UNAT and CLIP generative AI we went here you see it here denoising UNAT here with the skips connection and here uh, the Q key and value calculation that we have with a bottleneck function. Or if you would like to see this in detail, here you have it from the paper here. This is now the unit style synapse recurrent model that they found, the authors found. This is the best synapse recurrent model that works after all the model tested. So a unit like MLP. Now, coming here to the original publication, this is here the CTM architecture overview. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not that really <laughs> that I say, okay, I see it and I understand it. It's rather that I say I see it and I have more questions than ever. So, those are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Beautiful. And yeah, now let's have a look. So, the synapse model here, the first one, here, one. Weights depicted in blue, models now the cross neuron interaction to produce here the pre activations. We had already looked at the formula. So, for each neuron that we encounter, a history of pre activation is kept, and the most recent of which are then used by the neuron level models to produce here what we need post activation. And a history of post activation is also kept. We have this additional artificial dimension and used to compute a synchronization matrix. This synchronization matrix is one of the main new element. This is what we have here, the dynamics. So this is now important. And then we have some neuron pairs are selected from this synchronization matrix, yielding here some very specific representation with which the CTM produces output and modulates the data through the cross attention. We just had a look at this. And then it starts all over again. It is published today. I'm not really 
confidence that I understand this model reading here the paper for the very first time, but I will give you here my very first impression. If you want to have a look a little bit more at the mathematic part in the 60 pages, just here a summarization of the variables that we use. We have here a post activation at an internal tick T. We have here our recurrent synapse model weights. We have the pre activation at a particular internal tick T. We have the history of the most reset pre activation. We have the weights here of a single neuron level model. We have here the history of all post activation. We have the synchronization matrix. This is really important. And the linear weight matrix that project from S and S action to attention queries and prediction. And then we have the cross attention output O. Beautiful. Here are some formula that combines everything. You are familiar with this. Let's have a look here at the performance. Now the others tell us, great, no? We have this new model, and here on the left side, you see here a maze 39 terms 39, and CTM was trained to solve mazes here, size 39 times 39, up to a root length of 100. So for this, this is the training data for this kind of system here. This particular CTM was especially trained with the training data. And now the orders are amazed that now the system is also able to have an out-of-distribution capacity and emergence so that suddenly it is also able to generalize to a 99 times 99, if you want, maze structure. Now, I understand their inclination, but honestly, if you look at this particular pattern now as an AI, as a pattern machine, and you see this particular pattern, I would not really claim that we have here a complete new complexity level that we open up with our quotation mark intelligence, but I would rather say that this is just a subset here of a larger subset. And if it knows how to solve here this particular maze, and yeah, then it will be able to solve here very, very similar patterns, very, very similar maze structures. So, am I absolutely blown away by the result? Well, I don't know. Maybe I have to read the paper a second time. They have a beautiful page. This is here. Sakani ICTM. Go there. They have some interactive demonstration. But again, this is quite some <laughs> general visualization. Yeah, but you see exactly. They want kind of have some new ideas from the human autonomy. And they say, can we implement this to build some brand new model? Now, the main idea that you have really to focus on is the synchronization matrix. We look now at what neuron is firing at what particular time in conjunction with other neurons. So this synchronization matrix, if you think about a very abstract mathematical space where we examine all neurons in our system and we find different firing patterns, this kind of uh, established here a synchronization matrix, and this kind of established here the representation of this new AI system. So here in this particular space, we are performing our mathematical calculations. Given my actual level of knowledge about this published today, here I have for myself also, but I share it with you, this is here how transformer do in autoregressive mode, a classical transformer, and here, so the processes, if I think now how it would map over to a continuous sort machine. So, you know, a transformer, we predict the next element, the next token in the sequence given the previous tokens. So we have a sequential generation. Here we have a leverage of internal neural dynamics and this artificial time for general purpose problem solving. Beautiful. Input sequential, one token at a time. Time is the external tied to input, the sequence position. Recurrence is through feeding generated output back as an input. Okay, can sync over static or sequential data for multiple internal step. Time is an internal construct. Great. Then it becomes more interesting. No? We have here in the classical transformer neurons with feed forward networks typically use static activation functions or relo galo function state is primarily per token embedding. Here now, this is different. Here now we have our new neuron level models. So each neuron has its own private parameterized model that processes a history of its incoming pre-activation to produce its next post-activation. A highly dynamic system, and we have new synchronization elements, a new matrix structure computed from the history of all the neuron post-activation. This matrix directly forms here 
as I told you, this very special representation for action and output. Now what we have is a multi-head self-attention and a self-attention over input token embeddings and cross-attention between the T5 model, if you go with an encoder output or a decoder input here. This is clear, but now here on the new continuous thought machine, we have now our NLMs processing here the temporal signal history and we have a synchronization calculation where we measure now, as I told you, the co-activity, the identical firing here of our neuron pairs over this internal artificial time, potentially with a learnable temporal decay. And for self-attention here, we have now the cross-attention with our input data. And the query, remember, for this attention is derived from the neural synchronization matrix, the action matrix. Interesting. Linear layer project the final hidden state to the last relevant token to a vocabulary size logit distribution. This is the classical one. Here we have a linear layer projects a subsample portion of the neural synchronization matrix to the output space. The output can be generated at each internal tick. Syn as I showed you here, the synapse model here, we have in a parallel NLMs. Each neuron independently processes here its pre activation history. So it is rather. It is more complicated, it has more dimension, it has a more dynamic evolution. But honestly, I'm not sure if I really understand all the dependencies between the new matrix calculation and the new dimension and the interdependencies with the classical cross-attention calculation. Pre-activations via the synapse model, post-activation synchronization matrix, attention queries, outputs projected, Synapse model weight, private weights, weights for the projection, the synchronization, and the decay parameter for synchronization. Great. So my current understanding of this thing here published today, it introduces really a novel neural architecture by reintroducing here a kind of a temporal dynamics in a new artificial dimension and the synchronization now of our neurons in the way its solved task is now here you want the core computational primitive. So we look now here not at singular events but at the complete synchronization of multiple elements. It operates here over a decoupled, this is an interesting part but more about this later, internal temporal dimension or this sort ticks allowing here refinement of representation and action independent of the input data sequencing. And those are my current understanding of the three key innovations. So this is here my cheat sheet. If I come back in some days and say, okay, what I learned today. So we have here this shared synapse model, this UNET-like MLP that I showed you already. Processes prior post-activation at the attention modulated input to generate here the pre-activation. Those are the parameters we're working with. And then on the level of a single neuron, we have here neuron level private models for each single neuron, which computes now the post-activation based on the first in, first out history of the individual pre-activation, enabling here some complex temporal feature extraction. And remember, yeah, in my last two videos, we talked exactly about this. And then we have here a direct utilization here of the neural synchronization matrix as the representation of the system. Yeah, can be derived in a product, you know, we have had a look at this. Interesting. So very first sort here, very first look at this new research paper. Just wanted to give you a startup that you see that you don't really have to try to understand here the main line of sort, but hopefully I've given you, you some, some ideas where to start, what is the main content, what is the main insight of this new model. If you subscribe, I'm sure I will come back to this model if it turns out to be really helpful and successful and has a better performance than our current transformer models. If you like this kind of video, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one.